They'd run the classic good cop, hard cop interrogation. Rollo brandished a steely gaze. I've got this. Read about it a hundred times. Rollo swaggered past the chair which propped up the slumping Hiram Tolliver. Without even looking at his captive, he began with a long, blustery drawl. Mr. Tolliver remained motionless. Rollo spun around to face him. He'd clearly expected to rouse Mr. Tolliver with his booming voice. Beck and Luca gave each other an unsure glance. Rollo slammed his fist on the table. He grabbed the table lamp and beamed it onto the unconscious face. Mr. Tolliver groaned and slowly lifted his head. He recoiled with a muddled, weary squint. Uh -oh. The chair wobbled as he attempted to straighten up. Uh -oh. Mr. Tolliver could only make out rough shapes through the glaring light. With a gruff tone, Rollo hoped to both conceal his voice and intimidate. Doubtful expression on Beck and Luca's faces transformed into awe. Rollo, hitting his stride, was now channeling every detective trope his memory could recall. He slammed the table again. Mr. Tolliver's voice became desperate. He was nearly in tears. <laughs> Mr. Tolliver was in a daze, now more confused than ever. <laughs> He shook his head, feeling more and more dizzy. His voice faded. With that, Mr. Tolliver passed out cold. Rollo swung around with a repentant grimace.
Chapter 8 Six Feet Under, Three Towns Over The kids spent the rest of the afternoon combing through dusty piles of old county records, desperately searching for anything that could help them make sense of Mr. Tolliver's cryptic utterance. Luca tried to shake the thought of Grand's basement, but his focus wavered. Explosives, messages hidden in jam, dossiers on various town figures, and a corkboard threaded with photos. Gran was the only family he had left. He still couldn't bring himself to believe the worst. But the old map with the symbol of explosives in town square made that difficult. As the sun began to set, the kids were no closer to the truth. shut his book with an assertive nod. <laughs> Rollo muttered under his breath. <laughs> Beck slammed her finger down on the open page before glancing down to read. Something tickled the back of Luca's mind. The question hung in the air. Beck rubbed her eyes. Luca's heart was pounding as he approached the house. If he was lucky, Gran, or whoever it was, hadn't gotten back yet. And of course, there was Mr. Tolliver tied up and unconscious in the basement. Dealing with him would be the first order of business. Luca shook out his arms to calm his nerves before entering. He held perfectly still, tempering his breath and to listen closely. She was asleep. His only hope was that she hadn't found Mr. Tolliver before dozing off. Mr. Tolliver was nowhere to be seen. Maybe Gran knew everything. Luca's hungry stomach, not realizing it, he'd gone the entire day without eating. Luca rushed over to the pile of jam jars, unscrewed one, and shoveled. He flipped the lid to read the label.
Luca climbed the final stair, the emotion of the day dragged heavily. With each consecutive step, his legs weakened. His stride began to falter. He tried to grab for the railing to steady himself. Something was wrong. Luca groaned and tried to- His limbs might as well have been bolted to the ground. Through numb lips, he mumbled just before falling asleep. Chapter 9 A Speech to End All Speeches Luca awoke to find himself face down in bed. He moaned into his pillow. Why would Gran drug him? Or rather, why was she trying to drug Mr. Nuncreed? Shaking the questions from his woozy head, Luca snapped back to the matter at hand. Augustus Valentine nervously wiped his brow. Gus cleared his throat and awkwardly loosened his tie. <laughs> William Kerr bounded on the stage with the energy of a preacher at a big tent revival. He gave Gus a hearty slap on the back and motioned him off the stage. Mr. Kerr pulled a thick stack of note cards out from his vest. Mr. Kerr took a moment to survey the crowd. He wiped away a single tear. i 
podium to emphasize each word. Mr. Kerr nodded confidently, biting his lip. The crowd was silent, in rapt attention. began to build to a crescendo. The crowd began to look around nervously. Mr. Kerr quickly flicked through his note cards. He raised his hands up to the heavens. wall of impossibly cold air ripped through the crowd, instantly freezing everyone and everything it touched. For a man like William Kerr, this was a fitting way for things to end. On a stage, with an entire town frozen in rapt attention for the rest of time. The end. There's that ice again! Whenever I think we're getting close, it comes along and ruins everything! Maybe we should just quit? Maybe you should just close the book, walk away, and never think of me again! No, I... I don't mean that. We got a little closer this time. We just need to try again. Please. Please. 